Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be making over a few items and one is this little table that I had thrifted for $10 and I'm not sure what kind of finish this is. I, I wasn't crazy at all about the finish and I'm not even sure that it's real wood. I think it was maybe a pressed wood but I do like the detail in this piece so um, just painting it will help a lot because it, it is in really good condition. It's a very sturdy table. So I've decided to put black on this, and the reason is because uh, I'm using more of those transfers that my friend Paula had brought me, and uh, I thought black would be a really good color to put those transfers on. So I'm just giving this a couple of coats of uh, the color Caviar in Dixie Belle, and uh, any black color would work. I like the caviar because it's not um, as harsh of a black, but um, you could use just straight black on this because uh, I'm gonna be using a white wax on it to bring out all this detail. So like I said, I give it a couple of coats, let it dry well, and then I'm gonna be using some uh, wax on this, but first, uh, I'm not going to make the same mistake I made last week when I put the wax on first and then decided afterwards that it needed a transfer. So um, I'm not going to do that here. I'm going to paint it and put that transfer on and then uh, I'll use the white wax. So like I said, once this is covered and dry, then I'm just going to put a transfer on the top. And this is just, a, it's almost like an arrangement of flowers. Um, I showed it in one of my last, one of my previous videos. And uh, I'm not even sure what the name of this is. Uh, I'll try to, um, try to add it to the description later when I look it up. Uh, but like I said, I'm going over this with with the white wax, and then I, I wipe it well, and then um, go over those legs, and you, you can see how that white wax really brings out all that detail in the legs and then around the top. And I'm really loving how this piece is turning out, and it just made such a big difference in it. And uh, like I said, I won't have hardly any money in this. If you were to count the transfer, which I didn't have to buy, then maybe that would have been $10 worth of transfer. And then, like I said, I've got $10, and so I've, I've got $20 and a little paint and wax in this table. Or I would have had that much in it. And then I think this table will easily sell for 55 and then I have a black uh, wicker chair that another friend had given me. And um, I thought about painting it, decided to leave it black, and uh, used the, another part of that same um, transfer on just the corner of this seat. And, um, and now I'm just adding some white wax here and kind of making this go together in the same vignette. So I just kind of put that wax on and wipe it well. Uh, you have to be careful not to be too heavy handed and get too much in areas that you can't wipe it from. Uh, that's the only thing about this wicker is it's very easy to get it the wax uneven on it but just wipe it down as good as you can. And then uh, now I'm just kind of re redoing a charger. And this was a uh, silver plate, but a lot of the silver had worn off. So this was a, a plate that I, I don't think was even sellable. So uh, I'm putting a coat of slick stick, and that's a Dixie Bell product to help paint stick to, um, to slick surfaces. And I let that slick st stick dry well, and now I'm going over this with, with a coat, and it just took one coat of the color drop cloth, and I, I paint that on the front and back, and then now I'm just using this stencil. 
And to find this stencil, I just went on Amazon and just, if you just search, then sings my soul stencil, then it, it's very easy to find. And I'm doing this in two different colors. I'm using the color drop cloth. And this is a green that I had mixed up um, using uh, Rebel Yellow Kazoo and um, Collard Greens. And I just mixed equal parts of those and came up with this color. And now I'm white waxing that, this, what I call a charger, I guess, uh, to bring out the detail around the edges. And I thrifted this box just like this, and I like the gold that's inside it, so I'm just going to leave that, especially since I'm using that color in my vignette. And now I'm using that same green that I mixed up for that stencil and just painting one coat on this entire piece, all except for that gold. Uh, so I paint the bottom and the sides and in the lid. And once that dries well, then I'm going to use that white wax again because there, there is so much detail to this piece uh, to bring out with that white wax. And this box, I think I thrifted for maybe, maybe $4, uh, but the color was not good on it and the finish was not good. Uh, so I just thought this green would look really good with this and, and that white wax. And it really made a difference in this piece. And this was a really heavy box, uh, a really well-made box. But so just changing that color was enough to, uh, to update this little box. And this item sold very quickly, so I uh, wasn't able to include it in my vignette. And that happens sometimes because I'll get an item done and I, I generally wouldn't put it out until I had already put it on the video. But sometimes I like to kind of build my vignette as I'm working and I put it out and then someone sees it and it sells and then I just kind of have to rethink what I'm doing on this and like I said I didn't get to um, to put all these items in the vignette that I'll show you at the end but you can see here how that white wax really made a difference in this little box it was really hard to see what the finish looked like when I started with this box but it, it wasn't an attractive finish at all so um, I really felt like it needed to be changed up and I was real happy with how this turned out and then the next item that I'm going to work on is just a little framed um, piece of art and um, because this is gold normally I paint over gold but I'm trying to work on the antique brass look for this vignette so I decided here just to keep the gold because there's a lot of detail in this frame so all I'm going to do with this frame is just put some brown wax on it and make it look more like an antique gold. And then, like I said, this brown settles into the creases and, and all that detail, and it really makes it pop, and it really changes up this frame. And I'm painting it with the glass on because um, I have, it has the paper covered back. And I didn't want to disturb that. And um, so what I'm going to do is just do my art over the top of the glass. So once I wipe this white wax or this brown wax off, then I'm just going to cut a piece of scrapbook paper and that I think will coordinate with my vignette and then just decoupage that directly onto that glass. And if you haven't tried that, that's a very quick and easy way to update a little thrifted frame. And I don't know about your thrift stores, but I find these little frames uh, for very little money at all the thrift stores that I shop at. So like I said, I'm just going to cut that scrapbook paper uh, the exact size of the opening there. And then just decoupage that 
onto that glass. And then I'm not going to just leave that scrapbook paper on it. That's just going to be my background because I kind of wanted to layer this somewhat. So, um, so I put that decoupage paper on. And then uh, I'm just going to cut a piece of tea towel, ta coffee stain tea towel uh, in a in a rectangle just a little smaller than than this so that I have that uh, scrapbook paper border and then because I don't want to hot glue that on because I don't want to see those little beads of glue underneath this thinner fabric then I'm just gonna when I put that top layer of Mod Podge on that scrapbook paper I'm just gonna put that uh, cloth directly on it and then um, and then that will glue it on and then I won't have you won't see that glue underneath and generally I would stamp this because I'm going to be adding a stamp to this cloth generally I would stamp it first and then do this and I didn't do it because I was kind of deciding what I was doing along the way so um, I just as soon as I put that cloth on there before that decoupage has time to start seeping through and making that fabric wet then I'm just going to go ahead and do my stamping on this so um, I'm just I've just got a little piece of or a little flower um, stamp and I'm going to use the stays on ink in the color olive green and then I'm going to just stamp that little flower on there in olive green. And then that's all that I have to do to this frame. And it'll be ready to sell. So um, if, if you don't buy these little frames, especially when the frames have some detail in them, uh, then you really should kind of be on the lookout for them because uh, they are very easy to find and very inexpensive. And then not only can you use these little frames for this, but you can use them for trim and you can take the frame apart and use those little pieces of wood for trim. Uh, there's really a lot of uses for these little frames since you can buy them so uh, at such a low price. And then the last item that we're going to work on is just a little bird. And I've done these birds before in different finishes. And um, I get these birds at the Dollar General for $1, which I think is an excellent value since these birds are concrete. Uh, but uh, I love the concrete on the bottom, the top... I'm not crazy about so um, so I'm going to be painting over this one and it was gold already so I decided to use this to uh, paint uh, to make look like to make it look like it's um, brass uh, brass or obviously it's not going to be gold it's not going to be believable that it's gold so we're just going to make this look like antique brass and although I'm not really a fan of brass, it seems to be making a comeback in small items. So uh, I just give this a coat of the color Antique Gold, and this is a folk art color. It's one of their metallic finishes. And although it's Antique Gold, it's not antique enough for me. So once this dries well, then I'm going to be going over this with a coat of uh, brown wax. And I probably should have used slick stick on the top of this uh, because I felt like the top didn't do as well as the bottom. So that raw concrete painting over the top of it took that brown wax much better then painting over the top of that slick stick and putting the brown wax on it but it still it looked good enough but um i preferred the bottom i just felt like the bottom of this piece had uh was looked a lot more realistic and uh, i mean to just see that you would think it was 
actually antique brass, but the top, you know, it's kind of obvious that it's not. So if I had it to do over again, I will, and I'll probably do more like this because I do love how the bottom turned out, but I'll do something different on the top first to make that um, brown wax show better. And when you're putting wax on items like this, small items like this, there's really not much to do but hold it and make a mess. And that's okay because, as I've said before, this wax uh, cleans up very well, I think. And I don't mind getting it all over myself because I know that I can clean it off easily. And I wish I had gotten better after pictures of all this. I, I know that was my plan and I've been trying to do a lot better, but I got really busy today and wasn't able to do that. So just that uh, picture in the end, I'll just show it longer to show you uh, the items that I can still show you because at that point I had sold some of these items anyway. Uh, but I guess um, the fact that they sold too soon is not a bad thing, but it wasn't a good thing for this video. But as you can see here, this bottom really did uh, look like brass. Uh, and so here is what's left of the vignette that I can show you. Even those bottles there I had done in, a, in another video, and they even sold today. So, um, But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next. Have a great evening, and God bless you and your family.